Number three, hell is an eternal punishment. It's not this temporary chastisement. And this is what the Muslims believe hell is. The Muslims believe there is an eternal hell that unbelievers go to, but for the believer, hell is also a temporary chastisement, meaning you go to hell to pay off your sins, kind of like this idea of purgatory, where you go there, you burn off your sins, and then eventually you'll go to heaven. Uh, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that hell is an eternal place, um, and there is no out of hell. There is no temporarily going to hell in the Bible. But I just wanted to show you um, just how we can support this doctrine of uh, hell being eternal. And, and the first one is just here in Revelation 20 and in Revelation 19. Because <clears throat> in Revelation 19, we read about the beast and the false prophet being cast into the lake of fire. It says here in verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, and which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So we see here um, that the that the beast and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire, right? And then in Revelation 20, we see here where Satan is cast into hell in the center of the universe. Oh, sorry, in, this, in, in the center of the earth, not the center of the universe, um, which could be the same thing, but I won't, won't go there. So the, the center of the earth He's bound for a thousand years. And remember, he's loosed out of his prison in verse 7. And then he goes to deceive the nations. And then in verse 10, it says here that the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So here in Revelation 20 verse 10, the beast and the false prophet have already been in the, in the lake of fire for a thousand years. And then Satan joins them in the lake of fire, and it says here, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So we see here that hell is an eternal place where people are tormented day and night forever and ever. Why? Because the beast and the false prophet are men. Because somebody might say, well, Satan is an angel, right? So Satan is not eternally destroyed like the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. But we see here that the beast and the false prophet are there and they are being tormented day and night forever and ever. So these two people are men and they are not being eternally destroyed. Um, what do they call it? Uh, yeah, annihilation. So they are not annihilated. They are there consciously being punished and punished. I would say the most uh, clear verse on everlasting um, punishment for hell is Matthew 25. Well, the Bible says here in Matthew 25, it says here in verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Because people that believe in annihilation, how can it be an everlasting punishment if you're annihilated? Because then your punishment is just instant, isn't it? But if you're punished forever and ever, day and night forever and ever, then it, it is an e it, it's an eternal punishment. It's not um, you're annihilated and then you don't feel it anymore. John 3.36, we see here, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Again, you can take from that to say, how does, the God, how does the wrath of God abide on you if you no longer exist? If you're annihilated and once you go to hell, you no longer exist, there's no conscious punishment, how does the wrath of God abide on you? Well, the Bible says it contrasts here everlasting life with the wrath of God abiding on you because hell is eternal. We saw that from Revelation and from Matthew. Um, look at this verse here in Daniel. It says here in verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at, thy, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found 
written in the book. So there's, there's a verse that supports um, the tribulation being before the rapture, because if we're delivered during this time of trouble, then obviously we're going through it. Uh, it says, Everyone that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust, here's the resurrection, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, so there's salvation, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So it's contempt or hatred or the, the wrath of God that lasts forever. So that sort of lines up with John 3.36 where the wrath of God abides on you. Some will awake to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Contempt that lasts forever. Now, there, there are a couple of other ways that you can show that people are not annihilated in hell, but I think are, are not as strong arguments against the doctrine of uh, annihilation. But one is uh, the rich man in Luke 16. Because it says here, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So we can see here in Luke 16 that the rich man is not being annihilated. right? He's not burning up in hell. But then somebody might say, you know, I, the reason why I'm saying this is maybe a weaker argument, because somebody might say, well, he's in the center of the earth right now, so he's not burning up in the center of the earth, but the you, annihilation only happens when you're cast into the lake of fire. And that's why I refer to that Revelation verse, where Revelation shows that the beast and the false prophet are being tormented day and night, forever and ever, eternal. And also Matthew 25, where it's an everlasting punishment at that last judgment day, where he divides the sheep and the goats, and they depart into everlasting punishment. And the other as well is uh, 2 Thessalonians 1. <clears throat> where the Bible says here, In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So the reason why, you know, I don't know whether this is a strong verse against annihilation, because they'll just say that the everlasting destruction is not everlasting punishment, but it's just that you're destroyed forever. And that's why it's the destruction that is everlasting and not the torment that is everlasting. But I believe that that can be taken both ways. So this, I believe this is another verse that teaches an everlasting hell, but the reason why I just say that it's a weaker verse is because I think that, that people have a, an answer for this, that, that it's not as clear as the other verses. But when we, when we put them all together, we can see that hell is an eternal place.